In this video, I'm going to show you guys four examples on how to solve quadratic inequalities. And keep in mind, these questions right here can be tricky, so be sure you do the way I show you. That way, you can ensure your answers are correct. And if you want to have an introduction video to these kind of things, you can click the links in the description of that video for you guys. This is the first one we're going to solve x squared minus 5x, that's less than 6. And ideally speaking, whenever we're dealing with a quadratic situation, we want to factor, right? But before we factor, we have to make sure one side is equal to 0. This is 6. Therefore, that's minus 6 on both sides. So that we can have the 0 that we want on the right-hand side, right? And then we can have x squared here, minus 5x, and this is minus 6, and this is still less than 0. We only subtract the 6 on both sides. The inequality stays the same. And now let's factor this. And we can get x and x. And 1 times 4 will give you negative 6. Together, they add up to negative 5. The combination is plus 1 minus 6, right? And then we bring down minus 0. Okay, now, we factor this already. We have to find the numbers that we care. We have two factors, and here are the numbers that we care. From the first factor here, x plus 1, think about it, how can you make that equal to 0? We care about negative 1. Because if you plug in negative 1 into this x, this factor will be 0. And then for the second factor, we are going to care about positive 6. Okay, so this is how you can do it, or you can seriously just do it somewhere real quick on the side, x plus 1 is equal to 0, and then I have to subtract 1 on both sides, so x is equal to negative 1. That's the first number we care. Second number, x minus 6 is equal to 0, I add 6 on both sides, so x is equal to 6. So these are the two numbers that we care. Right now, we are just going to use the number line, and then I'm going to label the numbers that we care on the number line. Smaller number should be on the left, which is negative 1 here, and then the bigger number, let me just put down 6 right here. And then we'll refer back to the original inequality. This is just a less than, there's no equal to, right? And even though we care about these two numbers, but because there's no equal sign, therefore we are not going to include these two numbers. And I'm just going to use an open circle here, and an open circle here. Even though we care about them, but we don't want to have them because the inequality says so. And then, you see, we have the number line. We have one, two, three. Three intervals now. We just have to pick a number in each interval and plug it into this one and check if it's the true statement or not. And let me show you. Right here, pick a number that's less than negative one. You can say negative 2, negative 3, negative 2.1, anything as long as it's less than negative 1. So I'm just going to use negative 2 right here. And this is the number that we are going to test out. This is called the test value. And all we are going to do is plug in negative 2 into this x and that x and work out the value. So let's see. Negative 2 in here, we have negative 2, and then we add 1 to it, and then we multiply by x is negative 2, right? We chose that, and then minus 6. And we have negative 2 plus 1. This first parenthesis will give us negative 1. And we have the second one is negative 8. And negative 1 times negative 8 is positive 8. And is this less than 0? Well, 8 is not less than 0. This is false. If you end up with a false statement, that means this interval here is not part of the answer. And we move on to the next one, and we repeat the same process. Okay? And let's pick a number in between of negative 1 and 6. Let's say 0. Okay? And I'm going to plug in 0 into the factor form. And you can use the original as well, but then I think this will be the easy one. Let's see. 0 in here, so we have 0 plus 1. And then we multiply by 0, minus 6. And the first parenthesis will give us 1. The second parenthesis will give us negative 6. 1 times negative 6 is negative 6. Negative 6 is less than 0. This is correct. That means we will have this as 
the par a part of the answer. Right? This is the interval that we have. And then we are going to check the next one. Pick a number that's bigger than 6. Well, we can use 7, we can use 8. Let me just to emphasize the idea, you can pick any number that's bigger than 6. So let me use 10. Plugging 10 into here, we have 10 plus 1 times 10 minus 6. And let's see, this is 11 times 10 minus 6 is 4. 11 times 4 is 44. Is this less than 0? Well, of course not. So you cross it out. At the end, you see, the answer is just this interval. And you have to remember uh, how to write down the answer. This is the graph, right? And we can write this down as uh, inequality. The x value is in between of negative 1 and 6. So I can put x in the middle. And then we know we can put down the smaller x value on the left-hand side. And then the bigger x value on the right. And they are open circles. And remember, when you do it this way, the pointing thing, it's always pointing to the left, right? <laughs> so you can say x is in between of negative 1 and negative 6, not including negative 1, not including 6, because the original inequality, there was no equal sign. The last part is we can use interval notation. So the smaller number is negative 1, comma, the bigger number is 6. And this right here is just an open circle, therefore we use parentheses. Right here, we also use the parentheses because we are not including the 6. So this is it, and let's do the next one. So here's the second example. We are going to solve x squared that's greater than. So here's the second example. We are going to solve x squared greater than or equal to 6x. I want to show you guys a popular wrong way first. So that way, you can avoid not to make the same mistake. Let me first put down wrong right here x squared greater than or equal to 6x. It seems like we have x here and x here, and we can just divide both sides by x. So we can cancel, cancel, and we can reduce the power right here, right? And it seems like we can just end up x is greater than or equal to 6, and it seems like that's it. Sure, but this is not correct. Keep in mind, all these questions can be tricky. Be sure you do it the way I show you. We really have to find out the numbers that we care and do the number line test, okay? So with that being said, here is the correct way. Ideally, we want to factor, and to do that, we have to make one side equal to zero. So that's minus 6x on both sides. This way, we can get x squared minus 6x, and that's greater than or equal to zero. This right here has two terms, but I can still factor, right? Because they have x, they have x, so I can factor on x. So I will factor on x, and then we will have x minus 6, and this is still greater than or equal to 0. And now we have to find the numbers that we care. Let me write down. We care about two numbers. For the first factor, how can I make this 0? Well, it's just 0, right? Because we are saying x is equal to 0. And then for the second factor, how can I make this equal to 0? We need to have x is equal to positive 6. So uh, I'm not going to write this down this time because x is 0, and I need to have positive 6 from here. These two are the numbers that we care. And let's go ahead and draw our number line. And I'm going to mark the 0 here, and I'm going to put down the 6 here. We care about 0 and 6, and do we want to have them as well? Yes, because originally we have a greater than or equal to, therefore we have to include these two numbers. So I'm going to go here and use a closed circle, and then right here we also use a closed circle to indicate we are including 0 and 6. And now let's go ahead and pick a number that's less than 0, and let me just use negative 1, and these are the test values. Plug in negative 1 into here. So we will have negative 1 times the parentheses, negative 1 minus 6. So this is negative 1 times negative 1 minus 6 is negative 7. And negative 1 times negative 7 it is positive 7. Is this greater than or equal to 0? Yes, right? 
So that means I will take this interval as a part of my answer. So anything from 0 toward the left. And now let me pick a number from 0 to 6. I will just say that say I'm going to use 2. Plug in 2 in here times 2 minus 6. And this is just 2. 2 minus 6 is negative 4. And 2 times negative 4 is negative 8. And negative 8, is this greater than or equal to 0? Of course not, right? And then now let's do this again. Pick a number bigger than 6, let's say 7, plug into here. So we have 7 times 7 minus 6. And here we have 7, 7 minus 6 is 1. 7 times 1 is just 7, and this is also greater than or equal to 0. It's correct. So I'm going to take this as part of the answer as well. And now it's about time for us to write down the answer. We'll first do it with inequality. We have two intervals, two pieces, right? For the first one, this is 0 and less, including 0. So we will have x. Let's put down the x first. And we have less than or equal to 0, the equal sign because it's a closed circle. And then we have the other portion right here, 6 or more. x is greater than or equal to positive 6. And keep in mind, whenever we have two pieces, just like this, we must write down the inequality with two x, like one x here and then the other one right here. Interval notation, so the, for the first piece, we will have negative infinity to 0, including the 0, so I put down a square bracket. And for the union, Right, that's the or, and then we go from 6 to infinity. Square bracket, 6, and then all the way to infinity. And then, of course, parentheses. 